Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at something a little bit different. This is a Pacta HF data modem, specifically the SCS DR9400. Now we're gonna talk about what it does, who uses Pacta, the history behind the mode, the different versions like Pacta 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then at the end of the video, we'll do a demonstration of how we could send and receive an email over HF. So this is the SCS DR9400, a modern multi-mode HF data modem designed primarily for Pacta communications. Now it supports Pacta 1, Pacta 2, Pacta 3, and you guessed it, Pacta 4, depending on firmware and licensing though. And it's designed for both amateur radio and professional or marine HF users. Now on that front panel, we mostly see status LEDs, which show active connections via Bluetooth or USB. We also have two LEDs, which turn either red or green, and these indicate which Pacta mode is in use. Errors, audio level, PTT status, and receive status LEDs are also located on that front panel, along with a little reset button, which is recessed into that front panel. Now on the back panel, we have a physical power switch, a DC input, which ranges from 12 to 28 volts DC. There's also a USB-C socket, a transceiver control socket, a GPS serial data input, a transceiver audio connection, which provides audio to and from your transceiver. There's an ethernet socket for connecting via a local wired network. And then there's four USB ports, which you can use them to connect to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth dongle adapters if you either want to use Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Now, pretty much every connection method has been incorporated into this Pacta modem, so you shouldn't be stuck when it comes to communicating with it from your computer. Now, inside, this isn't just a sound card modem. It has dedicated DSP hardware, forward error correction capability, and a highly optimized protocol stack designed specifically for reliable long distance data over HF. And well, that's really what Pacta is all about. Robust communication in poor conditions. So who invented Pacta and when did it really start being used? Well, Pacta was invented in the early 1990s by two German amateurs working under the company Special Communication Systems or SCS, the same company that makes this DR9400. Now the name Pacta actually comes from a combination of packet radio and Amtor, which are two earlier HF digital modes. Now the idea was to take the robustness of Amtor and the data capability of packet radio and quite simply merge them into something much more efficient and reliable on HF. The early adopters included amateur radio operators expedition teams, and later on maritime and remote users who needed a way to send short messages and email over HF radio, long before satellite and internet access became widely available. Now, over time, Pacta has evolved through several generations. Now, Pacta 1, the original mode, narrow, slow, but extremely robust, that works even under weak or noisy signal conditions, but speeds were quite limited compared to later versions. Pacta 2 introduced improvements in modulation and error correction, giving higher speeds and better performance, but required dedicated hardware, so it remained mostly in commercial and advanced amateur applications. Now, Pacta 3 is where things really stepped up. Much higher throughput, adaptive speed levels, and excellent reliability. Now, this became the standard for WinLink HF email for many, many years. Now, Pacta 4 is the latest and fastest version capable of very high speeds for HF data transfer, but is also more controversial in some amateur regions due to bandwidth and licensing restrictions. And it generally requires modern SCS hardware like the DR9400. Now, there are some pros and cons for using Pacta. Now, let's just talk about the pros. So firstly, it's extremely reliable in weak or fading HF conditions. It has that strong error correction. 
It has adaptive speed and bandwidth and is designed for long distance, non-line of sight communications. The cons though are that it requires dedicated hardware, not just a sound card. Some versions are proprietary and licensed and not ideal for casual monitoring or hobby decoding. And even some higher level modes may not be permitted everywhere. So the question is, who uses Pacta today? Well, Pacta is still used today, although less than what it was 10 or 20 years ago. Now it is used by amateur radio operators, mainly for Winlink HF email these days, sailing and maritime users as a backup communication methods, remote expeditions and disaster relief teams also use this mode and also some government and NGO operations, particularly where infrastructure is limited. Now, even though satellite connectivity is more common now, Pacta remains popular in situations where HF radio is the most reliable and low cost option. Remember, subscription services to satellites for data can be expensive. Okay, so let's just quickly talk about the technical concepts of Pacta. Now, technically, Pacta is an ARQ, Automatic Repeat Request Digital Mode. That means it works as a linked two-way connection between two stations. One station transmits a block of data, the other station confirms whether it was received correctly, and if not, that block is retransmitted. Now, combined with forward error correction and interleaving, this makes Pacta extremely resilient to noise, fading, interference, and those propagations effects that we all have seen on HF. The modulation and bandwidth vary depending on the Pacta level, with higher versions using more complex constellations and adaptive symbol rates to squeeze as much data as possible out of noisy HF signals. And because it's linked mode, Pacta is not like FTA or PSK where you can just listen in. You generally cannot decode third-party Pacta traffic because the data stream is negotiated between two connected stations. So although you can see Pacta signals on a waterfall, you just can't simply read other people's messages. And in most countries, you shouldn't attempt to do that anyway. Okay, so let's do a quick demonstration of connecting to a Winlink server. So I've got my DR9400 connected to my HF transceiver, which is a Yaesu FT710. Incidentally, I did get cable supplied with this modem specifically for that model. So there was no messing around with making cables when I got the DR9400. We're going to use Winlink RMS Gateway and we're just going to send and receive a short email. But first, let me just talk you through the software and how you set it up. Now, just to explain this setup here, we have Winlink Express open on the top left of the screen. Now, treat this as an email client a bit like Outlook, for example. On the top right of the screen is my HF transceiver, which is a Yaesu FT710. Now on the bottom of the screen here, we have the Pacta modem, that's the DR9400. Now Winlink Express does have a setup wizard where you can enter your Winlink details, like your Winlink email address and your call sign. Email clients like Outlook use the internet to send and receive emails. However, with Winlink, you can choose a range of different communication options. You can select Telnet, which is via the internet, or you can choose RF methods like VARA, RDROP, and Pacta. So for this demo, I will select Pacta Winlink. I'll then press Open Session next to this selection, and, well, a new window will appear. Now, this is essentially the software that will talk between the Winlink mail client and the DR9400. Now, before you can start using this, you'll need to first configure the TNC options. This allows you to choose how this application talks to the pack to modem. Now, the DR9400 supports serial over USB, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and Ethernet. Now, for this example, I will be using USB or serial over USB. With the model selected from the drop-down and the correct COM port selected, I left most of the other settings as default. I then just press the update to save those settings. One other thing we need to change is we need to configure the radio connection. So from the settings button, select radio settings. Now I'm using an FT710, so that's the model I selected. Now the control for the 710's frequency 
can come directly from the computer or it can come via the pack to modem. Now this is where you choose those settings. Now I guess if you only had one USB port on your computer, then this would actually be quite handy. Now save those settings and then moving on, one of the cool features is that you can show a path prediction list and a map. Now this list will update from the internet and provide some path predictions. So you can choose a WinLink RF server that's in range and has a good quality signal. Now, of course, this feature would not work if you're off grid and you don't have internet. So in those scenarios, you will have to have already remembered or saved as favorites other WinLink servers that are on specific frequencies that you know are accessible at a specific time of day. When you click on a station on that list, the radio will change frequency to that station's frequency. Now there is also a map option here. Now this provides a quick visual aid of available stations indicated by green icons on the map. Now remember, these are just predictions and provide the best chances of getting a connection in theory. To start the connection, press the start button. The software will then control the DR9400 and the DR9400 will control the radio. Now listen as the connection is initially made and look at the received signal bandwidth. Once the connection is made and negotiated, you can see it switches to pack to four, which is also indicated by the P4 LED on the front panel of the DR9400. Depending on how many messages you have, the size of them will also determine how long the session will stay open for. Now, as well as sending text messages in email form, you can add attachments, send photos, images, and maybe even audio files. Now, I recently made a social media post asking for emails to be sent to my WinLink account, and here we have three messages. Now, the first one is from Brad, K0WET. Now Brad says, hi Matt, I was watching your most recent video on the Intercept software running on a Pi. I installed it and I'm experimenting with it now. I also saw your post on sending a WinLink message. I participate in several WinLink nets every week here in the US and one in Canada. QTH is Denver, Colorado, USA. We have a local packet network and several VHF UHF packet and VARA FM WinLink RMS stations here in Denver, Metro, and surrounding area. I'm subscribed to your channel and currently use an RTL SDR v4. Thanks for your great content and 73 from Denver, Colorado, USA. Brad K0 WET. Thanks, Brad. Much appreciated. And I did send you a reply. The second email is from Polo CT1 ETE. Hi, I love TechMind's YT channel. I saw your message on X and I'm sending you this email. Hope to hear from you in a video. 73, Paolo, CT1 ETE. Thanks, Paolo. Much appreciated. Happy New Year to you. And the last email here is from Stuart M0KKZ. Hello, Matt, and Happy New Year to you and your family. Really enjoy your videos, especially the QO100 stuff. Take care and 73, Stuart, aka M0KKZ. Thanks, Stuart. Happy New Year to you. I did reply to your WinLink message. So hopefully you will receive that soon. Now, each of these messages were sent via the WinLink messaging system, but they could have come from a normal, regular email address too, not just WinLink specific email addresses. So if you want to send me a message, you can email m0dqw at winlink.org and I'll read it when I next poll for any messages. Of course, I did reply to each of the emails that were sent to me earlier and sending emails is just the same. You compose the email, post it to the outbox, and then start the session again. Any incoming messages are downloaded from the server over RF, and any outbound messages are also sent to the server over RF. Now you can see how useful this is if you're off grid. This works if you're a ham, whether you're a marine out at sea, or some remote operator, or a government or NGO. Now the cost of the DR9400 is not particularly cheap, but it's the cream of the crop when it comes to pack to modems. Of course, I have been testing this for quite a few weeks now, testing various bands and various band conditions. And well, I'm pretty impressed. 
has been sessions where hardly any signal level was showing on the S meter and just a faint line on the waterfall. Yet it was still able to negotiate and send and receive emails from that RF server. They even tested sending images. And while those types of messages take a lot longer because there's more data to send, it does work flawlessly. Now, if you want to know more about the DR9400, I'll link below to the Wemo website where I got this modem from. Now, if any of you have a pack to modem, then please let me know. I would love to try out the peer to peer pack to session to see how well it works and maybe make some connections with some of you. Anyway, guys, there we go. That's an overview of what Pacta is, an overview of the PX Dragon DR9400 from SCS and a demonstration using WinLink. Let us know what your thoughts are on this in the comments below. And until the next video, take care of yourselves and we'll see you in the next video.